Alrighty guys, in today's video, we are going to be moving an 1100 pound gun safe. Now, before I get into my normal narration, I just wanted to point out that I am not a professional safe mover. This is not the best way to move a safe, and this is probably not the cheapest way to move a safe. This is just how I moved my safe. So I just wanted to put that out there before I get any nasty comments in the comment section about how this was expensive. I got the most expensive tree they had! Or it wasn't the best way or whatnot. So he's an idiot. Yeah. So take it for what it is. This is just the way a guy moved his own safe. So with that, I'll get to the normal narration. Alrighty, so before we make the safe, I'm going to take the time to make the right tool for the job. And that's a beefy furniture dolly. I wanted a dolly capable of well over the load of the safe, as well as a dolly that has large casters. When looking online for a heavy duty steel dolly, I found them pretty expensive and I figured I can build one cheaper, even with the current state of the steel market. Prices have gone up. I started off by getting all my pieces cut out with a cold cut chop saw and my bandsaw. I'll be making this dolly out of one inch square tubing with an eighth of an inch wall thickness, one inch angle iron that's three sixteenths of an inch thick, and quarter inch plate. I found a cheap set of four inch casters on Amazon that claim they're good to 1800 pounds. To get everything square and true, I'll be using a set of aluminum fireball squares. These squares have movable tabs on them, which allow the user not only to square up the pieces of steel, but also indicate them on the same plane. Using my MIG welding machine from Hobart, I tacked together my frame and then welded all the accessible seams. I measured the diagonal of my rectangle to check for squareness and found a variance of 1 32nd of an inch, which is more than adequate for this project. The next step was to finish up welding the frame and then grind these welds nice and flush with my new beefy 7 inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight. I bought this monster for cleaning up Damascus billets and it made short work of this task. Once the frame is flush, we'll lay it down on the 5 inch by 6 inch quarter inch mounting plates. If you are planning to use bolts on your casters, I'd advise drilling the holes ahead of time. However, in my case, I was on a time crunch and decided to weld on the casters. After all four of the mounting plates were welded to the frame, I started adding the 3 16ths of an inch thick angle iron supports. These angle iron supports will add rigidity to the entire assembly, support the mounting plates, and also allow mounting points for the plywood later in the build. As you can see here, I used my fireball minion squares to space out the angle iron braces. This is one of those situations where prior planning will really help speed up your work. The minion squares spaced the braces right where I needed them to be, in order to support the quarter inch mounting plates. Once I checked for squareness, I followed up the tack welds with long solid welds. I didn't show it here, however, I used a set of digital calipers to scribe some lines on my mounting plates in order to locate the casters symmetrically on all four corners. The coating on these casters was kind of nasty, and if I were to do it again, I'd grind off the coating with an angle grinder before attempting this weld. I then spray painted the frame and cut some scrap three quarters of an inch plywood for the topper. I pre-drilled the angle iron brackets for mounting hardware and then placed a whole steel assembly upside down on top of the plywood topper. Using some 3 quarters of an inch fasteners, I attached the plywood to the frame. For good measure, I also used some self-tapping screws on all four corners from the top of the dolly just to make sure this wood wasn't going anywhere. To protect the wood and to make the dolly more aesthetically pleasing, I decided to use my map gas torch and burn the plywood before coating it liberally with some boiled linseed oil. This gave the wood some moisture protection, but more importantly, it made the dolly look awesome. So here are some panning shots of how the dolly turned out. I have a feeling my grandkids will be inheriting this beast one day to move their furniture. So now that we have the dolly, let's get on to the one man safe move. The first step was to get this safe away from the wall. You really forget how heavy 1100 pounds is until you start trying to move it around without good handholds. Once I had it away from the wall, I tipped it up on one side and shimmed it with 2x4s. This gave me the clearance I needed to strap on a sweet 3,900 pound hydraulic furniture movie that I purchased from Northern Tool. There will be one of these on each side of the safe. In order to get the hydraulic mover on the other side, I used the first one to tip up the safe even further, move the 2x4s to the center of the safe, and then lower the hydraulic mover in order to rock the safe back and provide clearance. He's a genius, That's right? He's a genius. This worked pretty darn well and I was able to easily get the other hydraulic mover strapped on. Note that I'm using carpet samples from Home Depot as cushioned protection where the metal ratchet contacts the safe. 
All that's left to do is jack up each side and you can roll the safe around on big six inch casters. Depending on your house, this could be the last step and you can simply roll this guy out. The room we had the safe in was connected to a hallway with a pretty tight turn. So in our case, we had to remove one of the hydraulic movers and use our new dolly in order to get clearance. Now I said this was a method on how to move a safe on your own. However, I did employ my wife with this step in order to help me make this turn and not damage any walls. After making the first turn out of the room, the rest of the process was fairly easy, but it was a little time intensive. Don't assume that you can simply roll this heavy monster over a threshold unless it's a very small threshold or you have a nice low profile ramp. I solved this problem by using a step over method utilizing the new furniture dolly. The first step is to push the safe up to the threshold until the front six inch wheels on the hydraulic furniture mover contact it. Then place the four way furniture dolly under the center of the safe and allow the weight of the safe onto the dolly. During this step, I also kept the weight on the hydraulic mover in the rear. The hydraulic mover on the front can then be raised up. I used a welding clamp to hold the wheels up while I push them over the threshold. Once you're over the threshold, you can lower these wheels and lift the safe off the four-way furniture dolly. All that's left to do at this point is to roll the rear wheels up to the threshold and repeat the process. Once you're on concrete, rolling the safe around is pretty simple. To get to the moving truck, I had to contend with two thresholds and I used this stepping method to overcome both of them. I also used a stepping method to get the safe onto the lift gate of the Penske truck I rented. The lift gate had no issues getting the safe into the truck and once it was in the truck, I rolled it to its assigned location, lowered it onto some 2x4s as cribbing and strapped it to the wall of the truck. I also want to note here that the manual forklift I showed y'all in a previous moving video will also lift the safe. An alternate method could be to lift the safe with the manual stacker to the height of the bed and then either roll the entire stacker towards the truck and into the bed or back the truck up under the safe. That being said, I felt like the lift gate method was safer and easier. Just make sure to turn the front wheels perpendicular to the back wheels in order to stop the safe from rolling off the lift gate while lifting. So yeah, that's how I did it. I figured I spent around seven to $800 to move this safe on my own, and now I have the tools and experience to do it again if need be. I hope y'all got something out of this video, and if you did, please hit that like button down below. I'll also be putting links to the items I used in this video in the description if you're interested. There's still a bunch to do with the move, but I'm hoping to have a small temporary shop set up to crank out some fun builds while we construct a new shop. So make sure y'all are subscribed to the channel in order to follow along with the journey. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.